welcome everyone welcome to my channel marine sea time today i will be discussing about the different boil water test and its procedure and steps so first we will be talking about the alkalinity test so what is this alkalinity test alkalinity test uh, will determine uh, will determine uh, what amount of alkalinity is there in the boiler so whether uh, whether the boiler water is acidic or alkaline now if the ph uh, no why the boiler water is acidic so the boiler water can be acidic due to if the boiler uh, ph is low it can be generated in bulk in boiler water by the corrosion pits of the action of the dissolved oxygen and the chloride so if the chloride concentration in the boiler is more or dissolved oxygen is more then it can lead to the uh, it can lead uh, to the uh, boiler water as acidic so if there is a chloride uh, the chloride level so the chloride level can come due to the sea water ingress into the boiler water system from the condenser or is the river water or is the river so if the the main causes of the alkalinity high or the acid forming is the sea water or the river water so river water which is low in carbonates and sulfate so there are two causes of acid forming either it can be sea water or river water which is low in carbonate and sulfate so uh, the sea water will increase the chloride concentration in the boiler water and this chloride can form hydrochloric acid and this acid can actually cause the low ph in the boiler water so uh, we are testing the uh, boiler water alkalinity by two first one is phenolphthalein alkalinity test and the second one is total alkalinity test phenolphthalein alkalinity test is also called p alkalinity te- or test or partial alkalinity test so in the partial alkalinity test this test is carried out to prevent acidic corrosion it is to test to presence of all the hydroxide one by one half of the carbonate and one third of the phosphate present in the boiler water so it will determine all hydroxide half of carbonates and one third of phosphates in the boiler water so you can see how this test is done take random amount of boiler water sample add 10 drops of phenolphthalein color will change to pink now add n by 50 sulfuric acid till color will vanish the quantity of sulfuric acid will indicate the phenolphthalein alkalinity of boiler water so result is drop of sulfuric acid into 10 is equal to p alkalinity in ppm so now we will talk about total alkalinity test in total alkalinity test it will determine the amount of all hydroxide all the carbonates and two third of the phosphate so why there is a carbonate and two phosphate uh, why it will determine the carbonate and also the phosphate because if there is a river water which is low in carbonate and sulfate can also can cause uh, corrosion in the boiler water so we have to we have to determine the amount of carbonate as well as phosphate in the boiler water too so you can see how we are we are testing with the above sample at 10 drops of methyl orange color will change to orange now add sulfuric acid till color changes to pink So the result is that number of drops of sulfuric acid into 10 is equal to total alkalinity in, in ppm. This test is used to test hydroxide plus carbonate plus bicarbonate in boiler water. Now the third one is the chloride test. So chloride test is also very important. Chloride test is also very important. It is to know the amount of salt in the boiler water. So to minimize the chloride level and to test the chloride. So if suppose in the alkalinity test, if suppose in the alkalinity test, if there is alkalinity, if the alkalinity value is very high, then what we have to do is just partial blow down or add some sodium sulfate chemicals in the uh, in the uh, tank in the condenser tank okay so add the uh, sodium sulfate uh, chemical in the condenser tank or if the alkalinity level is very low <coughs> so what you have to do is add noh chemical to desired result okay so add noh to uh, noh chemical to desired result So we have a alkalinity uh, chemical. So put that alkalinity, uh, alkalinity chemical in, into the boiler water, into the condensed water to increase the amount of alkalinity in the boiler water. So chloride can come in, into the boiler water through the condenser leakage or fresh water generator evaporator leakage. So these are the all the ways from which uh, the boiler water can be contaminated with chloride. So how we can reduce this chloride? so this chloride can form acid formation and can degrade or erode the tubes so base should be present in the boiler water to prevent acid corrosion of the gas so to prevent the acid corrosion or this chloride in the boiler water we have to add basic subst- uh, basic compound or alkalinity uh, chemical into the boiler water so if there is a high and uh, if the level of chloride level in the boiler water is increasing trace the source link and then rectify it or the uh, rectify it and the second one is that we can do is partial blow down of the boiler or uh, if after doing partial blow down also if it is not uh, chloride level is not coming down then blow down completely 
take fresh sweet water from the uh, in the cascade tank so how to reduce the uh, uh, chloride into boiler blow down frequently reduce the second one is the reduce the boiler load to minimum if highly contaminated shut down completely and wash out trace and first find the fault and remedies so this is the chloride test which we will do in one board sample sample after p alkalinity test to be used add 10 drops of potassium chromate color changes to yellow now add n by 35.5 silver nitrate till color changes to brick red the quantity of silver nitrate into 10 is equal to chloride present in water in ppm <coughs> now phosphate test so why we do this phosphate test because if there, uh, the phosphate is added into the boiler water to remove the scale formed in the boiler water so what is the scale the scale is actually the calcium carbonate calcium sulfate calcium chloride magnesium sulfate any sulfate chloride carbonate compound can form scales in the boiler water and this scale formation can cause major cause of overheating because uh, it can lead to tube failure reduce heat transfer cost can be increased so you have to prevent this scale formation phosphates are used anti scalants are used so these are the other ways by which the scale formation in a boiler boiler water can be reduced so we use phosphate so we have to do some phosphate test if the phosphate level is low then it can cause the scale formation will increase or the hardness of the um, boiler water will also increase so the reserve of phosphate should be maintained in the boiler water ready to neutralize any hardness or scale formation which uh, can occur in the boiler water so what are the tests we can do is take 25 ml of filtered boiler water sample add 25 ml of reagent molybdate then add one small spoon of stannous chloride color will change to blue use comparator to check the phosphate level so scales can be formed why there is a scale formation in the boiler so scale can be formed by salt that are, that are limited solubility but are not totally insoluble in boiler water this salts reach the deposit sites in the soluble form and precipitate so salts of calcium magnesium are the main causes of scale formation in the boiler so the chemical which are uh, which cannot be completely dissolved in the boiler water so it will form a it will form it will not if it is not soluble in boiler water then it can uh, reach or deposit in the tubes and it can form a layer in the tubes so this will prevent the uh, this will reduce the heat transfer to the boiler water and thus can lead to the tube failure so to reduce it we add phosphate into the boiler water now fifth is the ph test it is used to, it is used it is checked by using ph paper take the ph paper use the color comparator to check the ph now number six point is the hardness so hardness test uh, hardness test is done to check the to check for salt causing hardness so there are many salts which can cause hardness to the uh, boiler water <coughs> so hardness can be due to the calcium carbonate so we have to test uh, what is the concentration of calcium carbonates in the boiler water so more the foam hardness can be checked by can be carried out the means of conducting meter or we can use standard soap solution take boiler water in a beaker add soap solution and stir it for some time so more is the foam formed less is the hardness of the boiler water now number uh, number 7th one is i have left one uh, test over here this is the hydrogen test so hydrogen test will determine the amount of dissolved oxygen content into in the boiler water to know the reserve hydrogen ppm and to prevent corrosion and aeration so uh, the air can leak uh, into the uh, into the boiler water through some parts such as condenser or turbine or pumps through vents and drain. So this air can actually increase the dissolved oxygen, and this dissolved oxygen can cause corrosion, pitting, leading to boiler heating efficiency. It will reduce the heating of boiler heating efficiency because of this dissolved oxygen. So <clears throat> to prevent this, to prevent the dissolved oxygen. In the boiler water, we have a scavenger, uh, oxygen scavenger. So we have one chemical oxygen scavenger. So we put this oxygen scavenger in the cascade tank to uh, to reduce the dissolved oxygen in the boiler. This scavenger will take out all the oxygen from the boiler water. We can add. So this oxygen scavenger is basically mm -hmm. this oxygen scavenger chemical is basically hydrogen, or it can be or it can be sodium sulfate. So this chemical hydrogen, which, uh, which have a formula of N2H4. Is used in the boiler water to reduce the oxygen content in the boiler water. So the the another way to maintain to reduce the oxygen in the boiler water is is to increase the feed water temperature of the cascade tank. So these are the other way by which we can reduce the oxygen. To uh, these are the other method to minimize the oxygen content in the boiler water. So we have a hydrogen test. So in the hydrogen uh, hydrogen test, the mini hydrogen test or hydrazine test, we uh, we maintain the chemical 
uh, at a level of 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 ppm and 2h4 so you can you can write over here and 2h4 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 ppm and 2h4 so this is the value which we this is the minimum value which we have to maintain in the boiler uh, water to reduce the to or minimize the oxygen content in the boiler water now the number last point is the conductivity test so higher is the conductivity higher is the hardness so with the hardness stage you can find the general idea about the conductivity <coughs> so basically what are the values which, which we maintain in the boiler water pl alkalinity should be maintained minimum 150 ppm t alkalinity 300 ppm chloride 300 ppm phosphate 40 to 60 ppm conductivity 3000 us by centimeter for high pressure boiler 400 us uh, by centimeter for low pressure boiler so these are the all the ph 10 to 12, uh, 10 to 11 you can see the ph value is alkaline you can see the ph value is alkaline 11 to 10 to 11 plus the hydrogen and hydrogen should be maintained between 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 also phosphate phosphate is between 20 to 60 ppm so what is this phosphate reserve phosphate reserve is a reserve of phosphate which should be present in boiler water to neutralize any hardness salt which can enter this salt would deposit as a scale on the heating surface if reserve were too low while if too high a reserve leads to foaming and possible excess production of sludge it also gives alkalinity so there should be a phosphate reserve in the boiler water if the phosphate reserve is too too high if phosphate reserve suppose the phosphate reserve is too low then it can lead to the scale formation and hardness in the boiler water which can which can generally deteriorate the tube because uh, the heat of, uh, heat transfer will be reduced so the phosphate reserve should not be low and if the phosphate reserve is too high then it can cause high sludge formation in the boiler water it can lead this sludge formation in the boiler water can actually cause foaming so what is this foaming foaming is basically the sludge uh, the undissolved salt which is deposited on the surface of the boiler water so uh, as the steam is formed this for uh, the, as the steam is formed there is uh, the steam will have some bubbles the steam will have some it is a thick layer of steam bubbles on the top of the water surface this is basically the, what is the foaming it will form a thick layer of steam bubbles on the top of the water surface and this steam and this foaming can actually cause uh, cause the water to go into the condensate system condensate system in all the tanks and this con and this uh, foaming this foaming can cause water hammering into the steam system so this is and this is the reason we we reduce the foaming and priming in the boiler water so so you can see over here You can see these are the all the salts which is present in the boiler water and if we add phosphate then it will reduce this salt so if this phosphate level is very high if the phosphate concentration is very high then it will form calcium phosphate these are all the precipitate which will pre precipitate as a sludge okay so now you can see over here <coughs> if the phosphate level is very high if the sodium phosphate level is very high then it can form precipitate in the form of sludge and it will be it will form sludge in the boiler water now here you can see we have formed sodium carbonate so sodium carbonate now will react with water sodium carbonate now will react with water and form NaOH plus CO2 so if the phosphate reserves is high then it will form NaOH into the boiler water so alkalinity level will increase in the boiler water so at high pressure and temperature therefore it is very important in a high pressure boiler to keep the reserve level up to required concentration to avoid excessive caustic alkalinity and thus causing caustic crack 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 so this NaOH at high temperature will cause caustic embrittlement in the boiler this is the reason for the caustic crack cracking in the boiler so the phosphate reserves if the phosphate reserves is low it will form scale formation in the boiler and if the phosphate reserves is high it can form sludge in the boiler as well as caustic cracking in the boiler because of the formation of this NaOH you can see what the reaction over there how the NaOH is formed so these are the, all the salt uh, scales Upon reaction with sodium, uh, upon reaction with phosphate, it will form sludge. Plus, you can see in the first reaction, it is forming, it is forming sodium carbonate. So, this sodium carbonate upon reaction with water, it will form sodium hydroxide. And this sodium hydroxide at high temperature can cause caustic cracking in the boiler water.
so the objective is to maintain a desired ph without the presence of free oh alkalinity so you can see the ph uh, level is increasing the alkalinity level is increasing if the phosphate reserves in the polar water is high so our main objective is to our main objective is to increase uh, is to maintain the phosphate in such a level that alkalinity uh, the ph level is maintained at a desired value at a value between 10 to 11 and also uh, the phosphate should not be so high that it, will, it can cause caustic uh, it can cause NaOH to form and it can, can cause caustic embrittlement in the polar water so this is the main so the desired condition are obtained by maintaining the relation of the ph to phosphate so we have to maintain a relationship between ph to phosphate the ph should not be so high or the phosphate should not be so high so we have to maintain a relationship between because if the phosphate level is very high then it can it can decrease the ph value because the formation of this caustic uh, because the formation of the uh, sodium hydroxide which can cause caustic embrittlement and if the phosphate level is le low then it can form scale formation in the polar so the phosphate value is to be maintained at a desired uh, ratio between the pH to phosphate. Now I will tell you what is the purpose of this boiler water treatment. It is to prevent the scale formation in the boiler and the feed system. So to prevent the scale formation, we have to add phosphate in the boiler water. Now to prevent corrosion in the boiler and feed water system. So corrosion can be formed because of this oxygen content and also the chloride level in the boiler which can form dangerous gases, uh, acidic gases in the boiler water. So to prevent corrosion, we, uh, we add uh, alkalinity in the boiler water. Now, the number third, number third purpose of the boiler water treatment is to control the sludge formation and prevention of carryover with the steam. So, this is very important. Sludge formation. So, because of this scale, because of the many undesirable impurities in the boiler water, this can form sludge in the boiler. And this sludge can be prevented by boiler water treatment. Because this sludge can deposit on the top surface of the boiler water. And this can lead to foaming, foaming and priming in the... Uh, foaming and priming. And this can add water into the steam. That means it can cause carryover with the steam. So this water can be carried over with the steam. And if the steam contains some water, <coughs> then it can cause um, water hammering in the boiler water system. So this is the main reason that we do uh, boiler water treatment to avoid this sludge formation and prevention of carryover with the steam. Now number fourth point is to maintain the boiler water in alkaline condition and free from dissolved gases. Number fifth point is to prevent of entry into the boiler of foreign matters such as oil, waste, mill, scale, ferric oxide, copper, so sand etc so these are the foreign matters which can enter into the boiler water so boiler water treatment we can avoid this oil in the boiler water waste and all this so this is all about guys about the boiler water treatment and steps what is the purpose of boiler water test what how is the test carried what uh, what is phosphate reserves so if the boiler if uh, during test we get some um, sludge in the boiler water or if suppose the alkalinity level is high then we have to do some partial blowdown or total blowdown in the boiler to remove the impurities uh, from the boiler water system so hope you all guide, guys like the video if you like it please like and subscribe and if you haven't subscribed till now please subscribe the channel to get more videos like this and if you have any doubt regarding the boiler water test and boiler water treatment you can comment me on the below section thank you guys god bless you